Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, get started this evening. Welcome. We uh, are look forward to sharing some information with you tonight regarding our, our West Bloomfield Lakers Online, our fully remote learning um, educational option starting in fall 2020. I'm Deanna Barish. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning for West Bloomfield School District. I have with me uh, a number of great team members who are going to take just a couple of minutes to introduce themselves and will be part of our presentation this evening. So Gianna, do you want to start your, your first on my screen? Hi everyone, I'm Gianna Taylor and I am the ELA Curriculum Coordinator. Hi, uh, my name is Amy Quinn and I am the K-12 Math and Science Coordinator. Hi everyone, I'm Katherine Law. I'm the Instructional Technology and Social Studies Coordinator and District um, Assessment Coordinator. And good evening, everybody. I'm Eric Whitney. I am Assistant Superintendent of Talent Development and Management, which is also known as Human Resources. Good, thank you. So they will be uh, doing a number of things tonight, um, obviously answering questions as, as needed throughout the presentation, and then also monitoring our question and answer feature. So if you see on your screen, uh, most of us are now uh, old hat using web uh, using webinar as this is probably our our many webinar that we've had experience with this uh, spring since we've had to move into online so when you see the q a that's where you'll put your questions uh, no reason to raise your hand um, you can just type your question in the q a and the coordinators and eric will be monitoring that and we'll answer them as they can as as we present and then also we'll do some some um, opportunity for kind of larger questions maybe themes that we didn't necessarily touch on throughout the presentation that we'll answer at the end. So we wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to, to ask questions and so forth. But I will tell you, this is a pretty um, in-depth presentation. And so the format that we're using this evening actually is trying to anticipate those questions that you may have as a parent, as you're trying to make a decision about what, uh, what a learning opportunity you want for your child to have in the fall. And so tonight's format is really uh, answering a number of questions that we generated as we thought about as, as parents, what would I wanna know? What are those questions that I would need to have answers in order to make that very best decision for our family and for my child about fall 2020? And so we tried to anticipate those questions and, and develop some of those answers for you as well. So the first thing we wanna talk a little bit tonight is that I just wanna show you, this is just one of the slides with the questions that we'll address tonight. Um, and so it's a variety of, of topics as well. We'll talk a little bit about registration. We'll talk about schools of choice. We'll talk about instruction. Uh, we'll talk about what the technology is that we'll be providing for your, for your child. We'll talk a little bit about intervention support. Uh, we'll talk about whether or not learning online and remotely is the best option for your child. Uh, we will really wanna address secondary. So when's the course scheduling guide going to be able to, to be available? Will I earn a West Bloomfield diploma? Um, and all those sorts of things. So we wanna make sure that we answer a variety of questions for you this evening, so that you have that information um, at, at ready and, and at, your, uh, at, your, at your hands. We will share this uh, presentation with you as well. So this will be available on the website, as well as our presentation from this morning. They're exactly the same. Um, maybe we look a little more tired tonight than what we did this morning, um, but, but honestly, they're exactly the same presentation. We will have both the um, audio version at, at recorded so you can watch, but also we'll just share this PowerPoint presentation so you can go back and review it as you want as well. So what is Lakers Online? Lakers Online is West Bloomfield's remote learning only educational experience, and it's open for, to students in grades kindergarten through 12. It does make it a little different, that in and of itself, than a typical virtual school. There are very few and, and very, very few public schools that offer K through five virtual only. And so different than a charter or different than necessarily a virtual school that might be run in a comprehensive school district, typically they run in grades six through 12. Some just offer high school only courses. We felt it was important that we had an elementary option as well certainly uh, based on, on what's happened to the spring. And as we anticipate what fall might look like as we return to school in some form or fashion in August. So we are offering Lakers Online for our kindergartners through fifth graders as well. I love the arrow uh, on this slide because it shows you exactly where you can go on the West Bloomfield School District website in order to get all the information that you need about Lakers Online. And I'm actually gonna open the website right now so that you can see what it, 
what it looks like. I think I probably have it open. Please do not comment on the number of tabs that I currently have open on my on my laptop. It's been very busy in the teaching learning department this summer, and so uh, I have lots of work to do. This is our Lakers Online uh, webpage. We want you to use this as your resource for, for many, many things. One being any questions that you might have, I'll show you where you submit your questions so that we can respond to those. Um, it gives you information about programming. It's going to provide the link in order for you to be able to um, indicate your interest or that you're going to enroll your child in Lakers Online, whether that's a current West Bloomfield student or a schools of choice um, application. So those are both here as well. You will see the email address that I want to point out here, which is Lakers Online at WBSD.org. That email address goes directly to the coordinators and to myself. So the people that you see on our screen, on your screen, it goes to, to every, all of us. We monitor that and then answer those questions for you. There have been several people, which is fine, that have used the talk to us feature, which is on the main page. That just gets forwarded to us and might take a slightly longer for us to respond. If you want a fairly quick response within 24 hours for sure, um, and you're going to get someone who's directly going to answer that question, then I would use the Lakers online um, contact information email. Um, you can certainly call, although we're not really in the office right now. We're all working remotely, as you can see from our variety of home offices that we're currently residing in. Um, so probably the best way to get in touch with us is using this email address. You're also going to see on this webpage really some information about tonight, obviously the sessions we've been having, uh, a Q&A opportunity that we'll host next Tuesday evening, the deadlines to let us know what your plans are for the fall, and then uh, a parent and student orientation evening, and then obviously when school is going to begin. And very soon, the course catalog will be online, so you'll know which courses we're going to offer, and then obviously a sample of um, the daily schedules for each elementary, middle, and high school. So when you have questions, or as you begin to have this conversation as a family about next fall, we want to direct you back to this webpage because there is a, a number of um, pieces of information. The Lakers Online FAQ is here as well. We continually update it as we have questions that are asked um, that kind of are those broad themes. I'm, I know there are questions that we were asked today in our earlier session that we're going to want to make sure that we um, address in uh, our FAQ. So you'll want to go back and refer to that as well. So you'll see that we have all this information on our webpage. At this point in time, I'm going to go back to uh, my presentation as soon as I get that to pop up. So we wanted to make sure that you could see that. Um, and so, and always that, that's your best mode of communication as you go. So as we talk about why Lakers Online, right? So what, what, where's this coming from? We, we have not done much with remote learning other than when um, we realized in the spring very early, uh, prior to even most of our neighboring districts, that we were going to be closed for at least a period of time, maybe not really fully understanding it was going to be for the remainder of the school year. And so we recognized early in May, uh, quite honestly, that we were gonna have a number of families that were not comfortable necessarily sending their children back to school in the fall, given the current situation with COVID, safety screenings, protocols, the lack of vaccine, the lack of tracing, all those things that really play a, a part as you determine what's best uh, for your children. And so we surveyed our families in May and we had 1,389 responses. Now that's individual responses by family. So you might have multiple children in the district, but you only answered the survey once. So quite frankly, we feel like we got a, a pretty broad um, number of families that responded to this. We probably hit greater than 50% of our students. And at that time, the survey closed at the end of May, we had 28.9% of our families that were interested in a remote learning only experience. That really said to us as a teaching and learning team and as a district that we needed to make sure that we had an educational option for our families. Because we know that we want you to stay in West Bloomfield. We want you to feel like we are doing everything we can to be responsive to the needs of our community. And by the survey, we knew that an option we needed to consider was to create an online school in order to make sure that our families would stay within the district. So this is the, this is the data that we used in May. We certainly recognize that there probably have been some ebbs and flow in this data. Um, so for instance, the way you felt in May may not be the way you felt even two weeks ago when we saw this very steady decline in cases. And it may certainly be different than what you're seeing now as we're seeing an uptick in cases again. And uh, the governor's statement today that she wouldn't hesitate if need be to move us back a phase. 
And so I think we're, we're having to be um, responsive to this almost day by day situation. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we had a plan in place that would, would allow for that as well and, and allows us to be that nimble and flexible because we, we know that parents change, kids change, needs change, comfort level changes, but we knew that we needed to make sure that we had something in place. And so that's our, our survey data at this point in time. So you can see that we um, have our prospective student meetings tonight, and we had one this morning as well. We also uh, have a, a question and answer opportunity for you uh, next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We'll send out the webinar again so that you can do that. So what we're asking is that between now and next Tuesday, you really spend some time um, after this presentation looking at the website, um, I'll tell you when the course scheduling guide is going to be available so you can make some of those decisions. You might sit as a family and have a conversation about what is what is actually feasible for you as we consider this and where your, your level of comfort is with having your children home again. Um, and then come back with those questions that you might have generated uh, next Tuesday evening so that we can answer those for you. Unlike the format we're using tonight, which is webinar, next week we'll put you into breakout rooms with this team and we'll facilitate that conversation. And so we'll be able to record, we'll be able to have some interaction with you, we'll be able to answer those questions. I cannot tell you and none of our team members can tell you that we will be able to answer every question that you might have with absolute certainty. The only thing I can tell you is um, with certainty is there are many, many unknowns and every day those unknowns change. So we'll do our very best to answer those, your questions um, next Tuesday evening with the information that we have, but you'll have to recognize that we're, we're like you. It changes literally day by day. Um, and so we're responding to, to what we know and additional information. So we'll do the best we can um, to answer your questions, but I'm not sure that we'll be able to answer all of them next Tuesday, but we want you to come and we want you to ask those questions. You'll notice there's a student commitment deadline of Monday, July 27th. And you may be saying to yourself, why so early? School doesn't start until the 26th. Why do you need to know now? We, have, we will have to staff Lakers online. Part of the, the great thing about this, and we'll talk a little bit later about why this makes us very different than a typical virtual learning opportunity, is that it's taught by West Bloomfield teachers. But right now, we have not assigned any West Bloomfield teacher to Lakers online because we don't know who's going to enroll. We don't know what grade levels. We don't know what content areas. We don't know any of those things. So in order for us to adequately staff and have enough time to provide some very specialized professional development for our teachers so that they're ready to go and have the skills they need to be as effective as possible, we need to know that your children are gonna to commit to that on Monday, July the 27th. We then, Eric and myself, will be working feverishly um, in conjunction with our, um, our WBEA, our Education Association, to identify teachers, staff, and then begin that training process as well. We will hold a very important student and parent orientation on Thursday, August the 13th. There will be two opportunities, a 10 a.m. and a 7 p.m. We would love to tell you that we might be able to do it in person. I'm not holding out a lot of hope that that's going to be a possibility. Um, but we, do, we will talk to you about how to get on Canvas, how, which is our learning management system. How do I access the technology? What do I need to know as a parent who's, learning, who's supporting my learner in a remote learning environment? And what do I need to know as a learner? So your children need to be there too, so that they can be part of this orientation. And then our classes begin, it's actually Wednesday, August the 26th um, is when classes begin. So we will uh, we'll have school that starts prior to spring break, uh, prior to spring break, <laughs> I'm still on spring break, uh, prior to uh, uh, Labor Day. Um, and that's for everybody in West Bloomfield. That's our first day of school across the district. So we want you to have that information as well. We were fortunate enough to be able to recognize that um, we, we have this unique opportunity to provide a service to districts outside West Bloomfield or to students outside West Bloomfield as well. And so at the June 22nd board meeting, our board of education approved 140 total seats uh, for schools of choice for Lakers online. And so that application also is on the website and will need to be completed. And I want to be clear about this. There's been a lot of questions, so I want to make sure that I'm very clear. If you are a current West Bloomfield student who is here via schools of choice through STEAM, so you either attended Roosevelt via STEAM or you actually, or you're a school of choice student who came to Doherty or to Gretzko through our regular SOC window in K through two, you're a West Bloomfield student. So you have no problem moving into Lakers online and you do not need to apply. Okay, so let me be clear about that. 
Secondly, if you are not currently a West Bloomfield student and you reside in West Bloomfield, you reside in the school district, which is different than residing in West Bloomfield Township. You have to be very clear about where your, the boundaries are, but you reside in, in the West Bloomfield School District, you simply need to enroll with our enrollment office and, and let them know that you will be enrolling in Lakers online, but you will need to enroll through us. If you are a family who lives outside the West Bloomfield boundaries and you currently attend school in a neighboring Oak or in any Oakland County school district, you will need to apply for schools of choice. So there's a multitude of ways to be able to access Lakers online. We just wanna make sure that you get yourself into the right application pool and that you follow the right criteria. So we'll make sure that's clear as well. So if you are a current student, regardless, you have attended class in one of our bricks and mortar buildings, you are, you are a West Bloomfield student and you simply need to indicate that you wanna to move to Lakers online. If you are not a West Bloomfield student right now, you're attending outside the district, you need to apply for schools of choice. If you live in the district, but you've attended private school or you've, attend, you've open enrolled somewhere else or school of choice to somewhere else, but you wanna come back, then you will need to just simply enroll um, in West Bloomfield and move to Lakers online. We also wanna be clear about uh, something else as well. A student who comes via schools of choice into Lakers online. So I live in XYZ community, my kids attend school there. I'm applying for schools of choice to come to West Bloomfield. And I, was, I, I am able to enroll, we, there's enough room for me. Your only option for the 2021 school year is to attend via Lakers online. You may not enter into our bricks and mortar school. You would have the option in the spring if as a school of choice student through Lakers Online, if you decided it really didn't work for my family, um, I love West Bloomfield, we wanna stay in the district, you would have to apply via STEAM, which occurs in the winter and your child would have to meet criteria. But when you come into schools of choice through Lakers Online, you are staying in there for the duration. You will be an online student for at least the 2021 school year. If you are a current West Bloomfield student and you choose uh, to start in Lakers online, um, am I able to come back in, into bricks and mortar school? So I go to school at Doherty and I do Lakers online and then I want to come back to Doherty. Um, am I able to do that? The answer is not for at least a semester. A student who is currently in West Bloomfield, who currently attends one of our bricks and mortar schools, by committing to Lakers online, you're committing for a full semester minimally. You might say, but I enroll now, we really like it, but in October suddenly COVID is gone and I wanna send my kids back to school. If we are staffing and making those decisions and we are providing materials and we're providing instruction based on the information we have in August. And we are not going to be in a position to be able to bring students back into a building, particularly if we're socially distancing um, prior to any sort of really natural break in the school year, which is a semester. So when you're making this decision on August 27th, on or before August 27th, you must understand that if you're a current student, you're committing for at least first semester, which is January 21. If you are coming from outside the district, you're committing for the duration of the time that you attend West Bloomfield. So you will be a, you will be a fully remote learning only student. I'll reiterate that again later. It was something that came up a couple of times in the morning session. So I'll make sure that I say that again later so that it's clear for everybody. And it is confusing. So if you need more information or you need me to explain it again, I would recommend that you email us at the Lakers online at wbsd.org and I'll respond uh, again, kind of just to make sure you understand the different avenues to get into Lakers online. So what will a typical instructional day look like? And what makes Lakers online different from other virtual schools? One of the things that we're most excited about and, pr and proud of, quite frankly, is that it will be taught by our West Bloomfield teachers. Many virtual schools either subcontract their courses into third party carriers, um, and they're wonderful. They have, they have some really great courses that they offer, but they're not typically taught by a teacher. It's just course content, and it certainly is not taught by one of our teachers or someone they have a relationship with. So unlike other virtual schools, they actually will be led by, courses will be designed and taught by West Bloomfield teachers. Um, additionally, when we think about a, a typical instructional day, if you remember this spring, 
we asked our teachers and they rose to the occasion as they did throughout this entire COVID um, situation is to Zoom with your kids for at least 60 minutes every single day. And that took a variety of forms. When we started, it was really just make, checking in, making sure you were doing okay, making sure that they were getting to see their peers and that they were having some interaction with the teacher. And then we shifted to small group instruction, intervention, time to do some uh, office hours if need be. Maybe we had a book discussion. So you can expect that we will have live instruction in a variety of formats each and every day within Lakers Online. Uh, the question was asked earlier today, how many minutes will, might a teacher be live? You know, we're gonna provide some flexibility, not only for the teacher, but for the families. If you choose to, to participate in Lakers Online and you have multiple children at home, it's gonna be difficult if all of you are trying to Zoom at the exact same time. So we'll make sure that we are flexible in the amount of time our teachers are available, the hours that our teachers are available, and that you will record things that you can go back if it just doesn't work for your family. But if you need a teacher and you need that interaction, your child does, then there will be a West Bloomfield teacher there for them. I also wanna make sure, because I'm sure we have West Bloomfield teachers who are listening tonight, they're not on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there will be times when they may not get back to you within the first 15 minutes with a question because they too have families at home and kids and things to manage. Um, but we wanna make sure that there's someone available to, to you and to your child uh, throughout this process. The other thing that we're excited about that we feel is so vitally important with instruction is that there are materials outside of just online courses to support your child's learning. So for instance, we're creating to-go bags that will have things like math manipulatives, that will have science experiment parts so that you're able to complete the science experiments, um, that there will be um, paper, writing paper that mirrors what we use in the classroom, a whiteboard and a marker so that you could show the teacher from home what you've been able to, to write or the problem that you've solved. There'll be books, literature that is at your child's level so that you have a, a robust library at home as well and any number of things that will support your child's learning. That's very different than a typical learn virtual learning opportunity. Typically that is just instruction that is loaded into a, a learning management system. There's very little kind of interaction and it's very, very much self-paced and, and, and not a lot of opportunity to really get your hands dirty and to experience what you would um, if you were in a classroom. Our goal is to provide a very real like learning opportunity at home. So our teachers might indeed go into their classroom and teach, and they, they might live stream from their classroom while they run an experiment or while they do small group instruction, or they might bring all their things home and create a classroom at home. And so, and you'll want to say today, you need to have these materials in front of you because this is what we're going to be doing. So we are priding ourselves that this is going to be as close to a real um, learning experience as possible. But to be clear, what it might look like today and what we envision today might not be what it looks like in November. We're, we're doing this um, with a lot of input and a lot of research about programs that have been highly successful and about what we know that we've been able to accomplish this spring that really became the hallmark of West Bloomfield and the great things we did with cloud learning. But we also have to be realistic that it might be too much for a family to manage, it might be, be too much for a teacher to manage, and we might have to, we will always be re reflective and responsive and make adjustments as need be. What we can tell you is it will be a West Bloomfield teacher. There will be opportunity to engage daily with those teachers and that we will provide materials that are relevant, that are rich, that are rigorous, and that are, are uh, adopted by West Bloomfield schools. So we wanna make sure that you know that as well. And we do, we're excited. We think that make, that's gonna make us stand apart from um, other remote learning options as well. So what technology will be provided for uh, my, my child? We are very fortunate to be in West Bloomfield um, because we've had a community that has supported bonds that allow us to be a one-to-one -one district. We've been a one-to-one -one district for a number of years. We also have to give great kudos to our Board of Education who recognized that in order to continue to do cloud learning or classroom to cloud, C to C as we were returning in the fall, and then obviously with Lakers Online, that we needed the most up-to-date technology that we could have. And Part of the bond that the community passed in 2017 was designed to do a refresh of technology, but typically we kind of pace ourselves. Um, they, we agreed to pull the money forward and we purchased all new Chromebooks for every single West Bloomfield student in the fall. That's a pretty significant um, advantage 
that your children will have by enrolling in Lakers Online or, or coming back to school in West Bloomfield. So we have new Chromebooks that will be issued. They are able to support our learning management system. They're able to support Zoom. They're able to support the video needs that we have, the Google Apps for Education that we use. And so we're, we're happy that we're able to do that as well. Um, no different than what you have experienced maybe this fall or this spring, you might have thought we have a laptop at home. We don't need, we don't need a, a, a device from the district. We have a laptop at home. What we've learned as a teaching and learning team who made a number of deliveries or stops or I'll go to Roosevelt and meet you there so you can get a device is that that doesn't really work to try to share devices. So every child will be issued a Chromebook um, because it, it'll be important that they have their own to use whenever they need. We also know that Wi-Fi has been something that um, carriers across the country have provided free of charge in many cases throughout all, all this, the spring. I don't anticipate that will continue in infinity. And so we need to make sure that we have the opportunity for our families to have access to hotspots if need be. So if you choose Lakers online and you need to have a hotspot, we use Verizon and then a product called Kajit which does a number of things. One, it limits the websites that your children can visit. So they aren't on inappropriate, it blocks them. You can't, they cannot go to inappropriate sites. Um, two, it limits the amount of data they can use within a, a month. So we're not going to support your Netflix watching. <laughs> we're gonna support learning. We're not, it won't be, won't be for Netflix. And then finally, it also um, gives you the most speed that you possibly can have in a wireless device so that videos load quickly, students can upload work quickly and they can zoom without interruption. So if indeed you choose Lakers online and Wi-Fi is a need for your family, we have that opportunity available for you as well. Additionally, we adopted Canvas and I talked about it like everybody knows what it is because it is the world that my team is living right now. Um, if you notice the, the coordinators uh, that are here with us this evening, they look tired <laughs> because we are currently building all of our professional development for our teachers, our educators, K through 12 in Canvas and it goes live, the PD goes live on Monday. And so it is a fantastic tool. You know that in the spring we used Google Classroom. And it certainly met our needs in a time when we had very little time to turn around um, a, a product and to be able to build courses within an, a learning management system. But it was not designed to do that. And so again, we recognized and listened to the feedback from parents, from students, and from um, our staff that we needed something better that was more robust, that would support the type of an online instruction that we needed to do this fall. And so our board supported our purchase of Canvas. And you can see an example on the left. Um, Ms. Quinn, who is our resident elementary expert, has uh, spent a lot of time developing our, our um, elementary page. So if you have a, a little person, um, although I think a high school student would like these as well, um, you can see that they would be able to log in and they would see, oh, I'm in Ms. Mack's class. And today we're working on math. So go to the blue tile, go to the blue square, and that's where you're gonna work on your math. It is extremely easy to navigate. It allows your child to be very self-sufficient. It has some awesome tools. We've embedded videos. We've well, embedded quizzes within the video. They're allowed to go back. It's obvious when they didn't really watch the video. We've all done that. And when you try to, if you've ever gotten a ticket and you have to get your insurance fixed and you think that you can just skip to the end, you can't. And so we've done that feature as well. Um, there's opportunity for teachers to give video feedback, for your child to do video feedback. There's written um, awesome overlays that happen. It just is a fantastic tool. So if you choose Lakers Online, unlike what you saw with Google Classroom last year, what you're gonna see this year is Canvas. And it's definitely more picturesque. It's, it's, uh, it's easier to manage. It is just a, a fantastic tool. So that's what we will all be using K through 12, whether we're in Lakers Online or not, or just returning back to school. That is our, that is our, uh, our learning management system, system for this school year. So we wanted you to be able to see that as well. A question that we've been asked over and over and over again, um, and, and rightfully so, is will Lakers Online be able to support my child who has academic needs, my child who has an IEP, my child who has social emotional needs, or my student who is an English as a second English lang English language learner. And I want to just be very clear about this. In any case, whether your children have any of these needs or or not, 
This is a very individual decision. And you as moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas need to make the decision that is best for your individual children. It is a rigorous, meaningful educational experience and will not necessarily mirror what we saw in the spring. There'll be many things that are similar, but we can tell you that it will be more robust. It will be more challenging. There'll be higher expectations than what we had in the spring with cloud learning. As always, an IEP um, and, and placement decisions, least restrictive environment decisions are part of a team. And so if you are wondering whether or not your child is, is going to be supported and whether or not this is the best fit, I would reach out to, to your child's um, caseload teacher and ask that question. Reach out to Diane Swadish, reach out to Kim Szynski, our supervisor and our director, and ask that question. There is a level of independence that your child must be able to do in order to be able to, to be really successful in Lakers Online. And if you feel, um, certainly, that your child can do that and they have any needs, we will provide that support. There will be people who will provide resource room support and those additional um, either modifications or accommodations for your children. We will be able to support um, ESL and we'll talk about that in a little bit and what that's gonna look like. We know that um, kids who have social emotional needs before, um, every student has social emotional needs. Most adults have social emotional needs, uh, particularly after what's happened this spring. We're going to embed those kind of resiliency skills um, we will have a tool that we will use to help identify those kids that are maybe not overtly um, exhibiting signs of distress, but maybe are, are a little more reserved. And so we'll, we'll have a tool to help us identify who those kids are so we can provide that level of support. We'll make sure that students have interaction with peers and teachers on a regular basis, which will certainly help us to understand where they are emotionally um, in learning at home. This is a very isolating experience for all of us. Um, we are creatures of habit. We are creatures who wanna be with other people. That's where we like to be. And we've been asked to stay home for a long, long time. And there has not been a return to normalcy. And in fact, we may go back the other way for a period of time. There are going to be social emotional needs for our students. And so it is easy, and we wanna be very careful about this, for kids who already maybe didn't feel comfortable at school for a variety of reasons, to really isolate. And that's a, that is a concern. We wanna make sure that they have opportunity to interact with peers and that they're getting that help that they need. And so I, I think you need to be very clear and you need to know who your child is. You know your kids better than anybody else and whether or not this is the best environment for them and that whether or not we provide that support is, is really moot. Of course, we're always gonna support your children, but is this environment the best one at this point in time? And I think that's the question that you'll, you'll need to wrestle with as a family. So we talked a little bit about this and I'm, I'm gonna just go on a little bit about this, uh, the, uh, about what I talk, started before about the conversation about is this the right fit as well and, and, um, and so forth. When we get to that slide about how you need to have this conversation, what we're gonna ask you to do in the, in the next week or so. So we, I've already stated this, I wanna be very clear. We'll make sure that we get this out again so everybody can see this. You are committing to a full semester of Lakers Online if you are a current West Bloomfield student. So you're enrolling in August 2020 and you will remain in Lakers Online for at least the first semester, which ends at the, in the middle of January 21. And we would evaluate whether or not it was time for you to come back and, and all the reasons why that might be the best opportunity for you. If you're coming in via schools of choice through Lakers Online, you will remain remote you will, for the full school year. If you had interest in coming to our bricks and mortar school, you would have to apply for STEAM, uh, typically in January and February, and then meet criteria, and then be allowed to enter in the fall of 21 into our, uh, into our bricks and mortar school. So we wanna be very clear about that. This is not a vehicle to get into via schools of choice, start for a little bit on Lakers Online, then decide it's not for you. And then I wanna go into West Bloomfield High School or into um, Orchard Lake Middle School, that is, that is not an option you would need to remain in Lakers Online for the full school year. And we assume that you're probably making those decisions more than anything because of safety and because you want a robust learning experience, but we wanna be very clear that, that that would be where you would stay for the school year if you are not a current West Bloomfield student. 
So you saw on the website, it says, when will the course scheduling guide be available? Not just for middle school and high school, but also for elementary. Elementary is a little easier. It'll be the four core and it'll be some elective options as well, or your specials, arts and music, and, and as we can, PE and media center. So those are pretty much established. What we will be working on in the next week, I promise, is uh, the middle school and high school course scheduling guide. It will be available by Wednesday, July the 22nd. That'll give you time to peruse that before making a decision and letting us know on July the 27th. I can tell you that there, it will not be the full high school um, course offerings. It just cannot be. One, we're in year one of Lakers Online. And so it takes a great deal of time to build this um, rigorous and, and um, ample number of courses that we have at, at West Bloomfield High School. That's what makes our high school so great. If you look at our course scheduling guide, if you have not ever and don't have a student yet at the high school, go in and look at it. It is like a, it's like a small college um, uh, scheduling guide. There's multiple electives, there's multiple pathways, there are just all kinds of opportunity for our kids to experience some really cool learning opportunities. We're not going to be able to emulate all of those things in Lakers Online. It's just not feasible. There are labs that we're not going to be able to do. There are um, some things that are going to require additional technology that we are probably not going to be able to start in the fall. We could potentially add at a later date. So we want you to be clear that when you go through that course scheduling guide, you're going to want to make sure that your child is, is okay with the courses that we're going to offer and that that meets your child's needs academically. Are we going to be able to do a full um, uh, kind of swatch of, of AP courses? Probably not. Will we be able to do some AP courses? I believe so. Um, and so please keep an eye out for that course scheduling guide. It will be available on Wednesday the 22nd. It sh certainly should play into your decision about Lakers Online. Um, because if there's a course that your child is just, you know, set that that's the most important thing they, they take and that they're involved in and it's not in the course scheduling guide, then that's a conversation you need to have as a family. Um, there are just some courses that don't allow themselves to move as easily um, online as others. And so we have, to be, we have to be obviously respectful of that as well. We want these to be great courses. We don't want this to be something where um, we just kind of slapped it together and said, no, we can make this work. They really need to be uh, logistically work in, a, in an online setting as well. So please keep an eye out. Wednesday, July 22nd, we'll have those course scheduling guides available. Will my child earn a West Bluefield High School diploma? Absolutely. As long as they meet our West Bloomfield's uh, board established graduation requirements, Lakers Online is simply another arm of West Bloomfield High School. And so if they are taking a, a full course load and they're entering Lakers Online and they're taking electives and they have their, their four core and all the other things that they need, then yes, they will earn a West Bloomfield uh, diploma. So there's not a Lakers Online diploma. It is actually a West Bloomfield High School diploma. Um, you'll want to work with your child's counselor to do an audit of their transcript to make sure that they're on track and that when you're choosing those courses for make Lakers Online, that, that you're choosing the ones that are going to meet the most number of requirements and certainly meet you, uh, continue your path along towards graduation. So we'll be working with our counselors uh, in the coming weeks to make sure that they're, they understand what courses we're offering, that they can counsel correctly. Um, uh, uh, children who move into Lakers online. So that's, they're on summer vacation right now. We're trying to give them a little bit of a, a break, um, but we'll make sure that we bring them into that conversation very, very shortly so that they can uh, counsel you and your children as you, as you move forward. But yes, you will earn a, a West Bloomfield High School diploma. So what if we're unsure whether or not our child will be successful in Lakers online? This is really a conversation that, that is between you and your child and, and the rest of your family about whether or not this is going to work for you. We all moved from these active, busy lives working for, for us either um, outside the home, right, going into an office every single day, or um, taking care of the family, which is a job in and of itself, to strictly being at home. And at the same time, trying to manage the learning of our children. I have, uh, I have Two students who are at, at two kids who are at uh, Michigan State who popped up on the doorstep in early March because their courses in person were, were done. And so surprise, we're home for the next six months. And then I have also a, a rising freshman and a rising senior in high school who also were doing fully online classes. At the same time, we're managing all the things that we were doing in West Bloomfield. And my husband was home as well. It's a lot. And there were days that I certainly was more productive 
than others. And there were days that my kids were certainly more productive than others. I think what you have to think about, and you'll need to really sit down with your children, especially your older kids, is can they maintain a schedule? Can they meet deadlines? Can they do time management? Are they good self-advocates when need be? I know that at my house, I have two that are taking summer classes and that um, it's sometimes difficult to get them up in time to do their Zoom lessons because they've been up doing other things at late into the evening. And we've kind of gotten into that bad habit, mom, of letting them sleep until 10 or 11 o'clock every day. That's not good. And that's not good parenting on my part. I'm not judging anybody else, but I'm going to judge me. Not good parenting. I need to make sure that they maintain a schedule. So as you think about Lakers Online, it's not going to be, oh, I roll out of bed at 11, I do work for a few minutes, then I go play video games, then I come back and maybe I work for a little bit longer. If that's something that your child really struggles with, that ability to attend, that child, that meaning sit in front of a computer and complete that work, if your child really struggles um, to manage their time, not that all kids don't, but that it really struggles and the deadlines escape them, um, that they can't really work independently, um, you think about our little ones, our kindergartners through fifth graders, it required a lot of effort on your part to get them online, to get them logged in, to make sure they could access Zoom, all while you were trying to do all those other things. That will still continue with Lakers Online. Certainly with Canvas, there will be um, a, a certain level that it'll be just easier for them and it'll become old hat because they've been doing it for a while as well. But we wanna make sure that you also know where how you can support without having to be the only support. Can they get themselves online? Can they choose the courses? Can they access attendance and make sure that they're there? Can they participate in a Zoom conversation? Um, I think from a high school perspective, as I look at my freshman and my senior, it really is about can they meet those deadlines and manage their time? Um, if that's, I have one who can and I have one who cannot. And so I would not sign uh, my younger one up, would not, be a good, would not be a good candidate for anything online because he doesn't manage his time very well. And so I feel like you, you, need to, you know your children better than anybody else. And not all kids are the same, as we know. Um, every child is a little bit different. And one might be just fine, and another one might not. So I really encourage you to spend time talking to your kids about this. Certainly if it's health-related, you're talking about this. We're, we're, we're all talking about this because there's this fear about returning to school. And so I, I, I fully understand keeping your children at home until you feel that it's safe for them to return. I understand that and I respect that. I would then suggest that when the conversation is about establishing and helping your child understand that by moving to online learning, there is going to be a schedule. And, and we're gonna follow as closely as we can a typical school day and, and make sure that those parameters are in place and those expectations and those conversations are had now um, before you commit to those things. That's really, really important. Um, as you have those conversations and things may arise, questions arise within your family uh, and things that we didn't necessarily get to today, then I encourage you to come back on the 14th at 7 p.m. for our Q&A session so that we can kind of address those. If you have your children who are listening tonight, especially your middle schoolers or high schoolers, or during the course of the conversation in the next week, they ask good questions, have them join you. Have them come and ask that question. We're really talking about them more so than we're talking about you, quite frankly. And so we want to we want to hear their voices as well. So feel free to have your kids join and ask those questions next week as well. I'm not going to tell you we're going to be able to get down to the nitty gritty and say, you know, I got a B minus in a class and now I want to retake this and what might that be in my GPA? It probably won't be that granular. But really looking at those larger um, questions that you might have about schedule, about time in front of a Chromebook, about all those kinds of things. And so um, we encourage you to, to have that conversation as a family um, and to come back with your questions that, that we can answer for you um, next week uh, as best that we possibly can. So I think I didn't miss one, right? Oh, so what do we need to do? We wanna show this kind of um, timeline for you as well. So we are uh, we're working through the governor's plan and so if you, as you may know, last week, the governor's task force released their uh, return to school kind of comprehensive plan. And uh, it has a variety of phases and the phases match exactly where we are across the region. So right now, Metro Detroit is in phase four. 
I feel as if maybe heading towards phase three, quite frankly. But right now, we are solidly in, in phase four with no movement towards phase five anytime soon, which is exactly what she said today. So our plans as a district are to look at what is required and strongly recommended in phase four and plan for that for our return in August. But we also know that your voices need to be heard and that you may have questions or concerns or thoughts that we haven't really tapped. So on Monday, July the 13th, and we'll make an adjustment and make sure you'll get some information, you're gonna have the opportunity to enroll at 10 a.m. for an elementary parent focus group and at 11 a.m. for a secondary middle school and high school parent focus group. And we are limiting the number of participants because it's just too much for us to manage and we wanna keep the group small. And so you'll be assigned to a facilitator if you so choose and you register and you get a slot. And we'll, we're really gonna pick your brain. We're kind of gonna do just three questions and it's really gonna be more of a listening campaign about what your thoughts are, not necessarily about Lakers Online, but more about this return to school. And some of those things that are causing you to consider other options besides just returning to bricks and mortar school. Um, masks, uh, how are we gonna socially distance? How do we as a family manage a hybrid schedule? Um, what does it look like to eat lunch in the classroom? All those things that you might be worrying about and considering or things that we haven't. What's it look like on a school bus? How is my child really gonna be able to get the robust learning that they need? And, and probably some of those gaps that have been created by being out in the spring, if we only go in person two days a week and we're in a hybrid three days a week. What does that in-person instruction look like during that time? So if you're interested, very shortly, probably within the next 24 hours, we will be sending um, information out about how you can register to be part of that parent focus group. We are going to limit it, just so you know, to 60 um, elementary parents and 60 secondary parents, middle school and high school parents, simply because it's easier for, we, we need to be able to manage. Not that your voice isn't important and not that you probably are gonna represent, quite frankly, most of what people are thinking. Um, and so if you're interested, you'll wanna jump on that right away. You'll get a ticket um, actually so that we can let you in um, and so uh, they, there might be really like, you can put it on StubHub and make some money. I'm kidding. Um, but you, there is an opportunity for you to participate and to give us some feedback as, as we develop our plans. So that's on Monday. On Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're doing our Lakers online question and answer session. Um, and then we know what is most pressing for everybody. Staff, students, and families are, what is West Bloomfield going to do? And you probably have seen that some of our neighboring districts have begun to release their plans. And I just wanna be very clear that West Bloomfield has been a leader from the day one um, with cloud learning in March, with our classroom to cloud plan that we released in May. And we're gonna to continue to be leaders and do what is best for our West Bloomfield students, staff, and families. And quite frankly, based upon the parent feedback that we receive and the information we get from our staff because we're doing a staff focus group as well, our plan may look quite different than our neighboring districts. And I'm okay with that and our team is okay with that and our board of education is okay, is okay with that. Every district is different. Every need is different. And we need to be responsive to the needs of our community and not worry about what everybody else is doing. And so we've led quite frankly, fearlessly throughout this entire COVID closure and, and experience. And we're gonna to continue to do that. And so in order to do that, we know that your voices are important. We need to listen to you. We need to hear what your concerns are. We need to gather your ideas. I also wanna be very clear. We're in a really, really tough situation. No matter what decisions we make, there are gonna be people who are unhappy. And they're gonna to have to decide what the best learning option is for their kids. And we have to be okay with that too, that not everyone is gonna love every bit of what we put out. But what we are going to tell you is we've been transparent throughout this entire process and you've been well informed throughout this entire um, experience. So there won't be surprises because we've kept you abreast as best we possibly can and given you opportunities throughout March and April and May and June and July and going forward in August. And so we will continue with that transparency, but we will do what is best for West Bloomfield and for our staff and our students. And again, it may not look like what our neighboring districts are doing and that's okay. 
because we're using our kids and our data. And what is most important to us as a district is student and staff safety. And can we safely bring your children back to school and provide the best learning environment possible? And those are the questions that I know are keeping all of us up at night. I'm sure they're keeping you up at night. I know that I haven't slept in quite some time because how do we do this safely and efficiently and make sure that we're, we're doing what's best for kids. So on July the 21st at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., we are going to give a district classroom to cloud C to C return to school update. It really is going to happen then because you're going to need to make your decision about what's going to, whether you're ready to send your kids back to us or whether you want to go to, to Lakers online on July 27th. We also feel again in transparency, we're going to, we're going to show you what that plan is um, at that moment, knowing full well that we could go back to fully remote learning at any given time. If we move back, back to phase three, that's remote learning only. If we move to phase five, then we'll start to open things up no differently than, than what we'd like to do across the state. Please know we want to bring your kids back more than anything else. We would love nothing more than that school bus to roll up and have 80 kids on it and they tumble out and we start school as normal. We have popsicles with the principal. You have um, you know, all the bridge opportunities. We do all the cool things that we do to get kids excited at, at the high school. We do all those sorts of things. We have homecoming, we have football, we have all those things. We want that. That's, that is normal for all of us. That is the school that we know. Right now, we cannot guarantee and probably know that's not what it's going to look like in the fall. And we have to be okay with that. So I will encourage you, we all will encourage you on July the 21st to tune in either at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. again via webinar to hear what our return to school plans exactly are. We won't spend a lot of time on Lakers Online. We'll talk about it some, but we will spend a lot of time talking about what, would that, what will that look like on August 26th when we open our doors and we re return to some sort of uh, in-person instruction. July 22nd, we'll be scheduling uh, course guides will be available so you can see what we're gonna offer with Lakers Online. And then by the end of business on July 27th, you need to, uh, if you're a current West Bloomfield student, you'll need to indicate that you're enrolling in Lakers Online. If you're not, and you're gonna continue in our bricks and mortar school, you don't need to do anything. But if you're going to move to Lakers Online by July 27th, you need to, to complete that form so that we can begin staffing and assigning courses and, and all those things. Um, August 3rd is when the window closes for schools of choice applications. Families will be notified on August the 6th of their status and how to enroll in the school district. On August 13th, we'll have our student and parent orientation at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. for Lakers Online, which will be very, very important, really gonna be mandatory. Um, because it's going to be how we set the tone and explain the expectations and show you how to get into Canvas and how to download the app and how we're going to take attendance and meet the staff. So that'll be very, very important. And then August 26th is our first day of school, whether you're Lakers online or you're coming back into our bricks and mortar school. So that's our timeline. Um, I really have to give a lot of kudos to, to the team that you see in front of you and then largely um, our cabinet and, and our larger teaching and learning team our principals and our staff. Um, we, we really have done just a phenomenal job making sure that we are providing the best instruction that we can for our students and being responsive to their social emotional needs and, and uh, making sure that they continue to learn throughout the spring. We've also been extremely transparent in our process and extremely open to feedback and, and to what people are feeling. And so it is, it's your kind of obligation if you so choose um, to participate in things like this so that you can get that information. So if you hear things from your neighbors about, oh, I didn't know this, or here's what they're planning, and it's, it's not accurate, then I would encourage them, hey, you really should jump in, get on the website, read, come to one of our, our sessions, because we, we want to make sure that everyone is involved and knows what that plan is. So that's our timeline moving forward. Again, it feels like we're not getting much summer vacation, um, because it's already July the 7th, and you can see we pretty much have something multiple to, uh, weeks every single week from here on out. Um, and so, again, that's why we're here. We want to do what's best for you. We want to provide um, as much information as we possibly can. So our to-do list, and then I'm going to talk to you about what your to-do list is. You're going to get a little homework um, be before we meet again. 
we're going to continue to monitor enrollment both um, in district and schools of choice. I can tell you after our session this morning, um, both of them climbed significantly in a very short period of time. So um, I think we did, we, I think we have parents who are on the fence and will continue to be probably until we talk about what our return to school plan is really going to be um, for in-person instruction. But we'll continue to monitor that. Those course descriptions we're working on feverishly. They will be available on July the 22nd. So um, look for those in the morning on July the 22nd. We talked about that parent feedback opportunity. It is a wrong date. We actually pulled it back, pushed it back until Monday. Get, we know a lot of people travel over the weekend and we wanted to give time for that. So as you saw, um, we'll send out again, it's Monday at 10 a.m. for elementary parents and Monday at 11 a.m. for secondary parents. They'll be limited to 60 each and so you'll need to register in order to do that. But we don't want your parent, we do want your feedback. And then we're gonna to continue to answer your questions as they arise. Again, your best mode of communication is to email us at lakersonline at wbsd.org. And we are continuing to, to monitor that um, uh, all the time. I, in the middle of the night when I get up, I look to see if I have any emails to answer uh, from Lakers Online or that I can answer. Um, so make sure that you're, you're putting those questions into that Lakers Online and somebody will get back with you. Your homework. Um, is to do a couple of things. One, if you're interested in being a part of our focus group, when that information is shared, register because we'd like to have uh, to hear your voice. Two, have that conversation as a family about what your plans are for next fall. Make sure that your children understand that this is something that you're considering if you've not had that conversation. They may feel very strongly because kids have opinions um, that they really want to go back to school and try it. And you're going to have to explain why that might not be the best option for your family. Or maybe you change your mind and then you decide that's what you want to do. You may be thinking, nope, they're going back to school and, and so forth. And they may be, may be saying, I'm, I'm afraid. And again, I think their voices are important. So I want you to have those family conversations about how is this going to work at home? How are we going to manage all the things that we need to manage in our lives generally? And then generate questions that you may have and come back and be ready to ask those questions on Tuesday the 14th at 7 p.m. because that's our next Q&A session. The third thing I would ask that you do is to spend some time on our website, really checking out that Lakers online page, reading that FAQ document, looking at that, that daily schedule, um, and making sure that you fully understand what this program is going to entail. And so that's really what your homework is over the course of the next week as well. I know that my team has been monitoring the Q&A um, uh, throughout, uh, throughout the course of the presentation. Were there any major themes that we thought, and I'm sure they've been answering as we've gone, but oh, I know, yes. I didn't touch on athletics. So can I touch on athletics? I'm sorry, that, that I, I forgot. So um, there might be questions, I know there were this morning about athletics and schools of choice and, and just activities in general. Yeah. If you're a current West Bloomfield student, you can participate in anything that you so choose. So if you really have been involved in robotics or you have, uh, you have interest in playing a sport or are currently playing a sport and you're a West Bloomfield student, that's going to continue. You're just moving into a different program within our, our setting. So no problem at all to do any of those kinds of things. If you are a rising grader, I'm coming in via schools of choice. I go to XYZ school district and I'm coming in as a ninth grader in August, and I want to play, I want to run cross country. No problem, because you have not entered high school yet. And so therefore you can come from any district in Oakland County and you can do any fall sport, no problem. As long as you've met the grade criteria. Um, I will add that, we completed it today. I'll make sure that it goes into the FAQ document on the website so you can understand what that criteria is. Um, and it's grade point average, it's number of courses that you've taken, et cetera. If you're a rising sophomore, I'll be a sophomore in the 2021 school year, or I'll be a junior, or I'll be a senior, um, and I wanna play, let's just say in the fall, football. You cannot do that if you played football at your prior school district. So if I played football or volleyball, and I went to a neighboring district, and I'm gonna be a sophomore, I cannot come to West Bloomfield via Lakers online and play football or volleyball. I would have to sit out for at least the semester. But if I came from another district and I played football and it wasn't really my thing and I've decided now as a sophomore, I wanna run cross country, no problem. You can do that without, because that's changing sports. But you cannot come if you've played uh, volleyball 
or you've played soccer or you've played uh, field hockey in another school district in the fall and then you come to us and you think that you're going to be able to do that via Lakers Online, that's not possible if you're an upperclassman. Rising ninth grader, no problem. Sophomore, junior, senior status, it's a problem. Um, you'll either have to play another sport or you're going to have to be ineligible for that school year in that particular sport. So we want to be clear about that. And quite honestly, that's so that um, kids don't transfer from high school to high school because of, of sports programs. And so MHSAA has really issued some very stringent guidance about things like that. Um, and so we, we follow that. So if you're coming and, and uh, you're coming because you want a, an online learning experience um, and you also want to participate in sports, you just have to make sure you understand what those rules are as well. Sorry, I forgot to add that, but we'll make sure we get that FAQ document up, updated as well. Amy, what other questions did people have? Okay. Well, you're not going to believe this, but we answered 95 questions already. And <laughs> so most, wow. <laughs> that's a record. I mean, that really is a record. Um, most have been answered. Um, there was a, just a little bit of confusion. A few questions did ask if you could clarify again about if a family or student were to start in person, but wanted to move to Lakers in line, sorry, Lakers online mid semester. Uh, good question. So we actually talked a lot about that today as a team. That is significantly easier to move from in person to remote learning only than vice versa, because we can simply enroll your child into Lakers online um, much more much more easily because we will have caseload that can teachers load will be able to support it. It's really just moving classes over into an online learning environment. That's not a problem. If I moved you from, so we will be able to be responsive, but you cannot, I wanna be clear about this. You can't start in person, move to Lakers online, and then turn around next week and say, never mind, I wanna go back to bricks and mortar. And then two weeks later, never mind, I wanna go back to Lakers online. You get one move. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that we're not gonna to continue to do that, okay? So you, yes, you, so you can move from in person to Lakers online, but we're not gonna go back and forth throughout the course of the year. If you start in Lakers online, you cannot move to bricks and mortar until January, and then you're staying there. Like we, we, we have to be, we have to be reasonable about these things. Um, I, I when it was a high school principal in a district that had two high schools, and students were allowed to choose which, which one they wanted to, regardless of, of attendance area. They got one time to choose. So you couldn't start in one, and then go to the other, and then decide you didn't like it, and then come back, and then go back and forth. You were not allowed to do that. We have to be, we're going to be responsive, but that, that just becomes too hard for us on staffing. That just becomes too hard for continuity of learning for your children. And so we can move your child from bricks and mortar to online, but that we're not going to go back and forth. We are not going to move from online to bricks and mortar until the semester. We have to make sure that it makes sense um, instructionally and, and timing wise for your children. Deanna, I have another uh, question that people were asking. Um, and I apologize if in my haste to answer questions, I missed where you already answered this question, but bear with me. Can you confirm that students who enter Lakers online are able to participate in um, extracurriculars and clubs? Yes, they absolutely can, even if they're virtually. Um, so, you know, obviously <laughs> everything is up in the air, what it's going to look like in the fall anyway. But yes, they're, they're allowed to, if there is a homecoming dance, um, if there is a whatever, uh, they want to be in chess club or they want to be part of uh, drama or they want to be in the, in the fall play or they want to do band or whatever. Yes, they can certainly do any of those, those activities. They are West Bloomfield students. So yes, you certainly can. Um, you just, we just have to be careful about the athletic eligibility piece. But for activities, yes, you can certainly participate. You're, you're a West Bloomfield student. Anything else for the good of the order? So we want to thank you uh, tonight as, and uh, thank you to my team who's been feverishly, I saw them typing, <laughs> squinting and typing. So I knew that they were answering right. your questions. Um, so we appreciate that. We, we appreciate all of you coming this evening. We had about the same number of participants this morning. So we had just a, uh, about 275 participants this morning. We're over 200 tonight as well. Um, so we know that there's a lot of interest. Again, if you have questions or you have concerns or you need some specific things answered, Lakers online at wbsd.org is your best place to, to submit that question and to get a response. Um, 
We appreciate all you do. We are fortunate to be in West Bloomfield Schools. We're fortunate to be in a district that supports innovation and um, allows us to be responsive to the needs of, of our families and our community. And we look forward to being able to serve you in a variety of, of, of ways as we return to school in August. So thanks for everything and have a good rest of your evening.